Hey everyone, so I uh, figured to make a video showing you guys or talking to you guys about the reciprocal of a quadratic function. So there's going to be three cases that we're going to be talking about. Now the first one's going to be the same one that we talked about in class. So case one is going to be what happens when you have the reciprocal of a quadratic with two zeros, which, which is to say that the quadratic that's in the denominator has two zeros. Now if it has two zeros, we know that that means it's going to have uh, two vertical asymptotes, but uh, we know from the past that quadratics can have two, one, or no x-intercepts, uh, x which means that uh, we're actually going to have a couple cases where we might not have two vertical asymptotes. So let's take a look at this first case. So why don't we deal with uh, the equation f of x equals negative 2 over x squared plus x minus 2. So we're going to start by listing some of the critical properties, starting with the, uh, the y-intercept. So the y-intercept occurs at f of 0. So subbing 0 in for x, we get negative 2 over negative 2, which gives us a y-intercept of 1. Okay, next let's uh, talk about the x-intercepts. Well, we know that uh, since uh, this is a uh, the reciprocal of a quadratic, and we know that we're going to have a, uh, a constant in our numerator, we shouldn't have any x-intercepts. So we have no x-intercepts, and also we have a, hor a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, uh, let's talk about our vertical asymptotes. So our vertical asymptotes, well, we know that those are going to occur when the denominator equals 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our quadratic denominator, and we're going to set it equal to 0. So we get x squared plus x minus 2 equals to 0. And to solve this equation, we can do this by factoring or perhaps the quadratic formula. Uh, we, can, we can actually factor in this case. So it factors into x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0, which means that we get uh, vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. So now we have uh, a lot of information, so we can start graphing. So let's set up some axes here. Uh, we know that our y-intercept is at 1, so I'm going to place uh, a, a point at 1 on the y-axis. Uh, and we also know our uh, vertical asymptotes, so our first one is at negative 2, so I'm going to place a, just a faded line there. Uh, we have one at positive 1, so we're going to put another one right there. Okay, and notice that having the two vertical asymptotes separates the function into three kind of sections, three intervals. Uh, we, we're concerned with what's going to happen on each interval. We know there are no x-intercepts, so it can't cross the x-axis. Uh, so the function's either going to be positive or, or perhaps negative everywhere on the interval. So let's take a look at the interval uh, of x values less than negative 2. So x is less than negative 2. Uh, let's pick an x value uh, which is less than negative 2 and sub it in and see if we get positive or negative. So I'm choosing f of negative 3. Uh, subbing negative 3 in, we get negative 2 over 9 minus 3 minus 2, which ends up giving us a value of negative 0 0.5. The 0 0.5 isn't really important. What's important to us is that we know that on the interval uh, of x is less than negative 2, we have a negative value. And since uh, it's going to be negative uh, at x equals negative 3, we know it's going to be negative everywhere. So the function is going to look kind of like this down here, because it does have to approach the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, and we know it's going to be below the x-axis. So next, we're going to take a look at the, the middle interval. Now you're going to notice we already have a point there, because that's where our y-intercept occurs. So um, we know that the function is going to be positive there, it's not going to be negative. Um, and we know it has to approach the two uh, vertical asymptotes. Now one thing that I want to remind you of is that uh, the reciprocal of a quadratic is actually going to share an axis of symmetry with um, uh, the, the quadratic in its, uh, in its denominator. And uh, the quadratic in its denominator has x-intercepts of negative 2 and 1 in this case. So if we took the average of those two values, we would get our, um, our axis of symmetry, and that would actually give us negative 0 0.5. So we know that uh, it's, this whole function is going to be um, symmetrical about x equals negative 0 0.5, so that means that our middle section is going to kind of look like that. Okay. Um, next, we want to check our last interval, so that's where x is greater than 1. Uh, so let's pick a value greater than 1, so like 2. We check for f of 2, we get negative 2 over 4 plus 2 minus 2, which ends up giving us negative 0 0.5. Again, the 0 0.5 part's not important. What matters is that it's negative. So that means we know for that interval, the function is going to be below the x-axis. And it also is going to approach our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So it's going to look kind of like that. Okay, So that's case one, when we have uh, two vertical asymptotes because the quadratic in the denominator has two zeros. Let's take a look at case two now. So the case two is when you have the reciprocal of a quadratic with only one zero. So we need a function. 
How about g of x equals 2 over x squared minus 4x plus 4? So again, we'll state the critical properties in order to try graphing this. So uh, y-intercept well, occurs at g of 0, which is going to be 2 over 4, so at 0 0.5. Uh, again, there are going to be no x-intercepts in this case because we have a, a constant denominator. Uh, we also know we're going to have uh, a horizontal asymptote at uh, y equals 0, so the x-axis. And let's deal with the vertical asymptotes now. So <clears throat> the vertical asymptote, again, occurs where the denominator is 0. So we take x squared minus 4x plus 4, set that equal to 0. Uh, and we can solve this potentially by factoring or, again, quadratic formula. If you factor this, you end up getting uh, x minus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0, which you could write as x minus 2 squared equals 0. Notice that means that we only have one solution for x here. We get x equals 2. So that's going to be where our vertical asymptote occurs. Okay, let's start sketching. So uh, we know that we have a y-intercept at 0 0.5, so we're going to place a point at 0 0.5 on the y-axis. Um, okay, we should pro probably plot our vertical asymptote, which is at x equals 2. All right, so we put a vertical asymptote there. And notice that the vertical asymptote separates this function into only two intervals. So we have stuff to the left of, uh, of uh, x equals 2, and we have stuff to the right of x equals 2. Uh, now, if you notice to the left of x equals 2, we already have a point, that's our y-intercept. So we know the function is going to be positive on that interval, uh, and it's going to be approaching the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, so we can kind of sketch something in. It should look something like that. Okay, but what we do need to know is we need to, uh, to know whether the function is positive or negative to the right of x equals 2. So we're going to pick a test value. So on the interval x, uh, x is greater than 2, uh, we're going to try g of 3. So let's see, we have 2 over 9 minus 12 plus 4, which gives us a value of uh, 2, which is positive, so we can kind of plot uh, our function on the positive side, so above the x-axis. Now, um, I want you to notice, again, that we should have uh, this function be symmetrical. It should have a line of symmetry, which is the same as the line of symmetry of the quadratic and the denominator. Well, since the quadratic and the denominator only had one zero, that means its vertex would be on the x-axis. And that actually means that um, the, uh, the x-intercept that we got for at x equals 2 would be the, uh, uh, the axis of symmetry. So that means that this function would have to be symmetrical about x equals 2 as well, which it clearly is. Okay, let's check one more case, so case 3, where the reciprocal of the quadratic has no x-intercepts, or no zeros. Okay, so let's get a function again. How about h of x equals 2 over x squared plus x plus 2? Our y-intercept occurs at h of 0, which is 2 over 2, or 1. Again, we have no x-intercepts, we, since we have a constant numerator. Uh, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And for our vertical asymptote, right, we're going to take our denominator and we're going to set it equal to 0. So x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so again, you might be tempted to use uh, to factor or to use the quadratic formula for this. Uh, if you look carefully, it's not actually going to be factorable because we can't really find two numbers that multiply to give positive 2 and add to give 1. So it's not factorable. So you're going to be tempted to use the quadratic formula. Now, uh, I caution you to check the discriminant first. So that's what we're going to do. So b squared minus 4ac is our discriminant. Let's check the value. So we're going to have 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2, which simplifies into negative 7. So since our discriminant is negative, we know that there are going to be no solutions to x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0, which means there are no zeros of this, this quadratic in our denominator. And as such, we actually have no vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's start sketching. All right, so uh, we know we have a y-intercept at 1, so we're going to place a point there. Now, usually our next step would be to plot the vertical asymptotes, but we don't have any here. So that's actually not an information that, we, that we're that we going to be able to use. Um, in fact, this is pretty much all the information we have, the, uh, the horizontal asymptote at the x-axis sorry at the x -axis, and the y-intercept of, uh, of uh, uh, sorry, at positive 1 on the y-axis. That's all the information we have. So you might ask yourselves, how are we going to fill out the rest of this graph? So here's the thing. We know we're not going to be approaching a vertical asymptote. Um, we also know that uh, this reciprocal of a quadratic has to have the same axis of symmetry as uh, the, the quadratic in its denominator. So 
one thing that we could probably do is we can probably um, find out what the axis of symmetry is for the quadratic and use that as just a little bit more information to plot this. So let's find the axis of symmetry of x squared plus x plus 2, since that's the quadratic in the denominator. We know that the axis of symmetry will occur at x equals negative b over 2a. So we put in our b and a values, we get negative 1 over 2 times 1, which is negative 0.5. So our axis of symmetry is going to occur at negative 0.5. So x equals negative 0.5. Um, so why don't we take that x value and we plug it into our reciprocal of a quadratic and see what y value we get. So at least we have a point that we can plot. So we're going to look for h of negative 0.5, which is going to give us 2 over negative 0.5 squared plus negative 0.5 plus 2 which gives us 2 over uh, 0 0.25 minus 0 0.5 plus 2, which simplifies into approximately 1.33. So that means that we know we're going to have a point at negative 0 0.5, positive 1.33. Uh, so let's, uh, let's plot that right there. That's where it's going to be approximately. And again, we know that the function is going to be uh, symmetrical around that. We also know it's going to be approaching our horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, which is the x-axis. So the only real way we can, uh, we can actually draw this in now, right, is to have it, let's see, have it do something like this, right? Notice that it is symmetrical about uh, x equals negative 0 0.5, and it still approaches our horizontal asymptotes. So when you have the reciprocal of a quadratic with no zeros, it's going to look something like this, right? So you might need to, to get a little bit of information uh, in terms of the, uh, the axis of symmetry in order to plot it, uh, but it will look something like this. So I hope that helps, guys. Take care.